In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a pen drawing attachment for your CNC router so you can do cool stuff like this or this. And I'm going to show you four different ways how to do it. So these four different methods I'm going to show you vary in design from very simple and using only basic shop tools to a little more complex requiring a little more shop savvy and some specialized tools. However, each of these function essentially the same and will yield you virtually the same results. However, there's a few distinct different features that each one has like pros and cons. Now as far as what you can do with this attachment, aside from the obvious in drawing with your CNC, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. But we're going to leave that for a separate video, actually a series of videos, and there will be a link in the description box down below and at the end of this video to those. So be sure to check them out. And also I'd like to say before we begin, if you're new to my channel, please head to my homepage, uh, check out my other projects, uh, like, subscribe, you know the whole routine guys. It really helps me out. The more subscribers I got, you know, easier it is to grow a channel. So let's dive into it. Let's start with the simplest one of all. Uh, and I just think the one that requires the least amount of shop tools. This is made entirely of wood, aside from the pen itself, and you know, a couple screws and a little tiny washer. I can't really tell you exactly what size and shape to make this. Uh, that's gonna depend on your, your spindle, of your whether you're connecting it to a router or a spindle, or however you're gonna connect it to your machine. Essentially, you know, a hose clamp just holds this sucker on to your router or your spindle. In my case, the spindle. Um, and this is what is the most important feature of the first two designs I'm going to show you. Right here, the spring action. It's kind of backwards from a regular pin. You have to have this spring action. It's absolutely critical. Um, because you have give and take in the surface of whatever you're drawing on. Uh, your machine bed might not be perfectly flat, so you need to have this little take up here. Um, so let's deconstruct this, and I will show you the inside. This is just screwed on. Okay, so here's what we got. All right, here's the pen. And this is the pen tip. Let me. The body of the pen is still jammed up in the hole. That is what's left from this pen. So here's where you start. Aside from, uh, first thing you do is you select your pen. And this is the, probably the cheapest uh, click pen you can get. You know, businesses give them out, you know, as promotions, whatever, so you remember their names. Basically, you take one of these, you pull the tip off. And you need a straight body pen. That's what I got to tell you. It's, it's for this design, it's, it's important. You need a nice straight body so you can measure this and match up a drill bit size with this. Okay. So aside from that, first thing you do is this end just pulls right off and then out will come your, out will come your pen. And the spring will be like this when you disassemble this here pen. So you take this off, take this out. All right, you take the spring off of there, slide it on the other end. All right, so now we're a step closer. And you take your little washer, and this is a number six machine screw washer, and that goes on there like that. Okay, so now we can, this will be held in the, in the body of the thing, and this will give you the spring pressure, all right? So there you have it. So after that's done, Pretty much you stick it back in there and what you want to do is you want to kind of get a measurement from this part of the pen where the pen body starts to the outside of the washer um, and that's with in a little bit of slightly compressed position just you know slightly maybe a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch like that and you take that measurement and that's what you will cut off of the bottom of this pen. Uh, you make a matching hole size in your piece of wood right here, all right, and you slide your body of your pen up in there, and it should come out to be flush. That's that simple. 
and then this goes in there. Okay, your pen spring go in there. And you'll notice the spring is sticking up a little bit above the wood. And then with the washer, it sticks up a little bit. And then you make yourself a little block here of wood. Uh, I'd recommend using hardwood. This is maple. I had some maple scraps around. I'm sure you can use whatever you have. I just, I use maple and it worked out good. Uh, so you just, you drill a hole to clear this, you know, a little bit bigger. So there's not too much slop and you make a couple of screw holes. So you can screw this down. And there you have it. Okay, so now it's all captured in there and you have your spring action. There. Okay, so that's method number one. I'd, I'd say this, the, the pros on this, um, very easy to build with a uh, minimal amount of shop tools or specialized hardware. Um, all you need is a way to cut the wood. Um, this is actually super glued together. And then, you know, just one screw in from the back. It's holding up real, real good. A couple of screws there. And this was cut out in the uh, chop saw. I had a hog out an area here. You can see for the hose clamp to kind of go in there. Cons are, well, you can't really change the color of the pen very easily. Um, you, you know, you might be able to find different inserts for the same style pen that'll work, but that's pretty much its major con. Okay, next up, we have perhaps, well, I don't know if it's my favorite, but it is definitely very easy to build. Great results, and it, it gets by the drawback of the other one uh, in, in that, it's like if you buy the different refills that match this, it's quite simple to uh, change the pen, even while it's installed on the machine. Okay, so essentially this is just made from, well, obviously the body is made from some wood. Again, some wood scraps I had. Uh, I think this is hickory, whatever. I just grabbed it out of the scrap bin, um, you know, glued it together, cut these little channels here for, for this to slide through and clamp to the spindle of the, of the route uh, of the machine. And other than that, it's, it's, it's just elegant in its simplicity. Let me show you here. You take a piece of aluminum. Um, this is 1 16th thick, uh, one, one inch wide aluminum bar stock. You can get a piece of this at Lowe's or Home Depot. You bend it. Um, you can do that with a couple different ways. Uh, in a vise, uh, I used a pair of uh, hand a handbrake that's used for, you know, roofing and siding, bending, stuff like that. Uh, drill a couple of holes, a hole down in here for the pen tip. And what you want to do is you want to, you want to measure this metal part of your pen tip pretty accurately and drill the appropriate size hole just slightly bigger uh, so that this will freely slide up in there without too much slop and clean off any burrs, okay? Um, the second hole you got to drill is up top and these are lined up and you make that a little bit bigger than the body of your your pen here all right we'll just deconstruct this and show you how it goes together specifically so you measure this and you drill this hole slightly bigger and here you can have a little bit of slot if you don't have the exact size drill bit um, to drill little holes like this accurately I, I recommend if you don't already have one in your shop these are great to have if you do a lot of small uh, detailed work. It's a number drill bit set. They also have letter sets, but you know, each drill bit has a corresponding number. You may have come across this before, and it also has a fractional decimal point uh, of what it truly is. They're, they're very, very good to have a, a set like this around, and you can match drill bits up a lot easier than say fractional drill bits. So anyway, you, you, you drill this hole, that hole, and make sure you put some, some mounting screw holes in here to screw it to your wood block. Aside from that, it's, I mean, you're basically done. I built this entire thing in like, I think it was 10 and a half minutes. I mean, literally, it was, it was that quick. Here's the tricky part. You can, you, there are other ways to do this, but what I did was I, I got a little rubber O-ring. 
And I got this up at the auto parts store. I, I bought a little assortment pack they have there for a couple bucks. And you find one that fits on here pretty darn snug. Okay. So you can move that around. And of course, you're going to need a spring. Uh, when you buy this refill set, and you can pretty much use any kind of refill you want. Here's what I used. Pilot, extra fine. Uh, available at basically any office supply store or anywhere they sell stuff like that. Um, this, is, this, this has got a really fine point. Um, black, you can get them in any color. So anyway, you, you, you got to start with that. Um, then you, you got to have a spring that goes over that freely and won't jam but isn't too, isn't too, uh, you have to have a spring that isn't too forceful is I guess the word I'm looking for here. It's gotta be a pretty soft spring, but you know, take a little, you know, it has to take a little bit of pressure. And then, well, sorry, I have a washer going on there too. So you gotta scrum, you gotta scrounge up a spring from somewhere guys, if you don't have one in your, in your junk drawer, that's pretty important here. The, the one from a regular ballpoint pen won't work. But once you got the spring, the O-ring, I mean, it's that simple. Slide it up in there and down, and then you can just push this O-ring up and down to get the, the level of springiness you want here. I mean, you want this to be a little bit firm, but you know, it's, it shouldn't hurt your finger when you push on it. It shouldn't be that much pressure, but it's got to take, you know, a little bit of force to move it up and down so it stays tight to the material. Okay, so that's design number two. Very minimal amount of tools, material, and hardware, and it is, it, it works great. I mean, you could build this in 11 minutes. What more could you want? Pros, simplicity of construction. The cons, well, you got to have, you know, different, you know, if you want different colors, you need different refills. I don't know that, you know, you need all that many colors, unless you're doing some crazy artwork, but this is definitely awesome. Now this next design is stepping up a level. It operates on a, on, on a slightly different principle. There is no spring. It, it floats by, you know, just the gravity, the weight of this head sliding on a couple of rails with some ball bearing guides. I have three of them here. You can see this is some, this is quarter inch stock, uh, round stock, and these guides here. I actually used, you know, just stuff I had in the shop. These were left over from uh, a patio door repair. They, they sell these at Home Depot, any, any hardware store. They're, they're pretty junky bearings, really. I mean, they're not very precise, but they do work. And in the future, I'll tell you, I'm, I, I might be rebuilding this, uh, upgrading a little bit with some better quality bearings so that I get a little smoother action. I just have a little bit of slop in here that once in a while telegraphs into uh, the finished drawing. And that's largely because those bearings are, are total crap. Okay, uh, let me just show you one of the, th there's a lot of features on this one that I really like. Okay, it's, it's a little more complex to build. It's nothing that's beyond anybody that's, you know, you can do a little bit of accurate work. The most difficult thing is just getting these two rails here uh, parallel in the right distance apart so that your head can freely go up and down. That's it. Other than that, you can make this out of wood, uh, aluminum. I used acrylic because I have a bunch of scrap acrylic and this is glued. Uh, it's, I just had what I had on hand. Here's a piece of uh, aluminum channel left over from a, uh, a project you know, for the table saw making a miter sled. And I just use that to, to center the pen up or whatever I'm sticking in there. Here's the beauty of this. Whatever you can clamp in here, you can draw with. Whether it's a Sharpie marker, a pencil, a regular pen of any shape. It doesn't have to be a smooth body. Uh, these pilot points, these work pretty darn good. So anything you can put in there, you can, you can draw with. And the other beauty of this is, is since there is no spring, this has a lot more flow to it. When you bring this down onto your, the bed of your machine, you just clamp that back in there. When you bring this back down to the bed of your machine and you set the Z axis height, you know, you want to set a little, so it's got a little bit of upwards lift to it. 
like that. And then when this thing goes around, it will, it will travel up and down. It'll float. You've got a lot of float there, a lot more than you do with the spring setup. And the universal attachment. I mean, you can put whatever you want. And again, it just has a simple wood back that's screwed to it that has a hose clamp to hold it onto the spindle. Definitely up a level in precision of build, but the advantages, I think, are, are worthwhile. This, this might be my favorite for versatility, being that you can change the pen to, to just about anything. You know, you could put a crayon in there if you wanted to. All right. Now, the final one is pretty darn cool. You can actually buy these attachments. They're actually a couple hundred bucks. Now, I'm not saying that mine's better than theirs. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's not. I'm sure theirs is, is, is actually better. But this was like very cheap to build. Check this out. I basically made a pen. And the beauty of this, before we go into the construction details, is that it fits in my half inch collet. So this is truly centered up on the router, which is an important feature for a lot of, a lot of stuff, especially if you are going to be doing a combination of work on something, like let's say you're, you're, you're cutting out patterned parts and you want to uh, cut them and maybe mark them at the same time with whatever, uh, identifying marks or, or assembly instructions. You can chuck this in there and, and have text on your, on, on your, on your file and run this and you, you're, you're golden. So here we go, let's, let's get into the construction of this a little bit. Let me grab a smaller screwdriver. Got a little tiny flathead screw here holding the back on. I believe it's, again, I had this laying around. I think it's an M3 metric screw, like they're used in computer equipment, really small but it has to be small. So we have a back piece. Um, we'll get into that a little bit more. All right, here's, we'll go step by step. All right, again, an ink refill. I was a two pack, I used one for that one and, and one for this one. So you can get these shorter too. If you, if you don't have the Z height in your machine for something this long, you can actually get these refills, I mean, uh, I'd say an inch and a half shorter than this, and that's pretty important if, if you don't have the Z height. I do, uh, especially just for drawing on paper or something thin, so this worked out just fine. So here we go. I started with a piece of aluminum, half-inch OD aluminum tube, and this was from Lowe's, um, readily available in the hardware department. I believe it's like 0 0.40 inches in diameter, but the important part is it's half inch OD, which fits right in the collet. Yeah, nice, fits right in there, snug. Okay, so I start, started with a piece of this material, and I didn't actually cut it to length, that was one of the final steps. Um, I machined this little pen tip, which I'm probably gonna have a little video showing you me, me actually machining that, but really it's, it's simple. All it is is a, a, an insert, that slides into the tube, uh, the aluminum tube, it's super glued in place. And I just used some, work great, super glued in place. But this has, the most important thing is it, it, the shape, you wanna make it a, like a cone shape just so you can see more clearly um, the tip of the pen when it's in the machine. Um, but. Importantly is that there's two size holes drilled in this. One is a hole that just clears the tip of the pen, and the other one uh, allows it, it, it is, is bigger than the tip, bigger than this little shoulder, and allows this thing to seat in there so that it can only go out so far. Otherwise, it will be pushed out the front. So you just machine that little part, you know, depends on what size refill, those exact dimensions, but it's not rocket science. If you can operate a lathe to do this, you can figure that out. So here we have it. And then, I'm sorry, we have this back end piece, okay, which is just a piece of aluminum stock. Sorry, I used, I had some three quarter inch aluminum round stock that I machined both the tip and this back from. And chucked it in the lathe, 
turned it down so that it fit inside there, just, you know. I mean, it doesn't have to be super tight. And I have a little shoulder on it. Probably wasn't necessary, but I made that. And of course, we uh, drilled and tapped a hole for this M3 uh, screw. And I countersunk that as well. So it sits flush, so I can slide it, you know, in. I don't have to like just come this way. You know, I can also slide it through. Work good. So how does this assemble? Basically this, let me gather all my parts. Oh, you gotta make this little, you can get these little nylon spacers at Home Depot, Lowe's, hardware store. This is a 3 8 OD spacer. It had like a 1 8 inch hole in it. And it was just right for this little piece of plastic. You'll see what that's for in a second. But essentially, I just cut that piece of plastic off the end of one of these pens here. Okay? That's a little guide for these magnets. That's right, boys and girls. This one doesn't use a spring. We're getting high tech on you here. This uses a magnet. Magnets. So this goes in here. This little spacer has a Connor board hole in it, just a little bit to make a seat so that it stays centered on this and keeps that centered. The other hole is a clearance hole for this little plastic pen part. All right, so let's assemble this here. A little tricky to get it assembled sometimes, but so that goes down in there. Here's the real fun thing, gang. Neodymium magnet all right two of them you know i'm sorry i'm actually putting this on what i normally do is go like this this has a hole just partially drilled in for that neodymium magnet ring magnet no here again available at lowe's see that here's what i used that fit my tube 3 8 inch OD, 1 8 inch ID, 0.06 thick. These are really strong magnets. Caution. Read the caution. All right, so you take one magnet, set it on your little get plastic guide. You take your other magnet, and you flip it around so that the poles are opposite, and they want to repel each other like that. And then... You basically have a spring that's not a spring and you put all that in there and then install your little screw and that keeps that back place um, the most important thing here was just cutting this length of tubing to the correct dimension and it just it took a couple little trial and error shots to get it um, just cut a little bit smaller each time until you, um, you get it to all work so that you have spring pressure and you basically have a pen that chucks into your CNC collet. How about that, huh? With maybe, well, if you had to buy this, I don't, you know, you could get, probably get a little piece. Of, I, I know you can get a little piece of this at Lowe's as well, but the tubing was pretty cheap. Pen refill couple magnets. Um, save yourself probably a couple hundred bucks. And you know you can take this apart and change that to a different color if you wanted to. It's wonderful. So there we have it. Four different methods to build you a CNC drawing attachment. Whichever one you decide to build or, or more than one, like I said they have different features. The biggest advantage to this is that it's centered up right in your collet. That's a huge advantage. If I had to pick a favorite, uh, uh, for, for, for someone that's just getting into this, I'd say this, because it's so easy to build. I'd recommend you get started with this one. And if you like it, you know, then you can progress to you know, either or or both of these, you know, where you have a little more universal attachment um, in the floating head, you know, you can put anything in there or you can go with this one right here if you're just going to be drawing, you know, fine lines.